Hello and welcome back. We are going to be continuing our Victoria 3 tutorial series and we are going to be talking about uh, efficiency for PMs, what you should be doing specifically in the agricultural sector. We have our handy dandy spreadsheet. Let's come over to it. Just take a quick look at a second before we come on back and we will be consulting the spreadsheet when it comes to efficiency and also informing our strategy. Um, in this video, we're first going to talk about a general strategy. Then we're going to talk about additional opportunity costs of building agrarian stuff. Uh, then we're going to talk about specifically rain um, and then we're going to talk about the plantations we're also going to talk about the livestock of course in there and then we will talk about two strategies which i don't think are good but which i think i might be incorrect about them not being good and of course the car will loudly go outside but let's jump into it and first just talk about the general strategy so um as a general heuristic, uh, general strategy, you do not want to be building any of this agriculture stuff, uh, especially in the early and the mid game. As you get into the later on game, you eventually will want to be building it, but not very, very actively. And the reason for this is that these buildings have ownership, which you are not particularly enamored with. They are owned by aristocrats and aristocrats contribute 10% of their uh, dividend income to the investment pool. And so as a preferred class of ownership, you would rather have buildings that are owned by capitalists, which contribute 20% of their weekly balance to the investment pool. And so what you will want to do in the early game, the general strategy is you want to import all of this stuff, just wholesale all of it. Um, even if you have like a throughput bonus for it, you still want to import it. And so it is preferable to have as many of your sell orders as possible coming from trade routes uh, for these goods specifically. Okay, um, the second, or uh, and this is going to be the case for most of the game, uh, but there's kind of an inflection point where this changes, and it has to do with three technologies. The first one is improved fertilizer, which will make the grain specifically a lot more efficient, um, and it will also make the chem plants a little bit more uh, viable. And the second is pump jacks, which unlocks automatic irrigation for all of the plantation buildings, which basically doubles their output for the input of extra engines, and this will be extremely strong. When you get either one of these in conjunction with the Society Tech Mutual Funds, which allows you to switch to publicly traded then building arable stuff is kind of okay but it's again still not preferred and what publicly traded will do is it will change the ownership of the aristocrat owned buildings to be one-third capitalist which means instead of contributing roughly 10 percent to the investment pool uh relative to the capitalists when you have fully modified and caked up capitalists they'll actually be contributing 29 percent it's a little too much to unpack here but when you have this one-third ownership you will be contributing 16.3 for the um all of the capitalists or sorry all the aristocrat owned buildings versus 29 percent which for some buildings is a good enough uh because it takes less time to build farms and they're generally really efficient as far as the goods output goes and so because of this it will be okay kind of once you hit this inflection point of getting mutual funds and then improved fertilizer for the grain and then pump jacks for the plantations it will become okay but still not ideal okay Next, we need to talk about a secondary uh, opportunity to costs for every time you build one of these. And the first one has to do with migration, and that is you have migration attraction uh, according to uh, unused arable land, you will get a bonus. And you notice here, uh, it is accounting for our base value, not including this percentage modification, it is accounting for like over half relative to our standard of living and so this is kind of a big deal and it helps a lot for migration and when you build a bunch of farming you nuke this and so this is something you want to keep in mind and this is why it is generally migration attraction is a good stat and so this is going to be a bit uncomfortable because it is decreasing migration uh just by building these out and the second is going to be uh if you have a lot of peasants um, if you have peasants currently employed in subsistence farms, you will actually be outputting goods. And so when you nuke, when you build over any type of farm, and so let's go to a Chinese province to talk about this. When you build over any of this, you will nuke one of the subsistence farms, which will kill uh, some of the output that is getting put out by the subsistence farms, and you will cause the pops to become unemployed. This is bad. And so, you know, it's not caked up or it's not contained in the cost of building the building and then this is especially the case with rice farms but if you have any type of subsistence employment man oh man do you really want to avoid building any agriculture there this is why great shing after patch 1.2 has a whole lot of problems is because they have chronic unemployment as a result of you know having to fire double the pops that they were firing before every time they build any agriculture and then you the player import silk uh, and dyes and like grain from them and this further you know exacerbates the problem because it makes the businesses profitable 
their auto cube builds it and it's big sad for them okay so let's jump into um, talking about the farms in particular we're going to talk about grain um, which is uh, the rye the wheat the rice the millet and the farms before we talk about this let's just quickly go over the subsistence farms um, and talk about the spreadsheet okay so for the spreadsheet the number we really care about is publicly trade or how much investment pool we are getting per construction this is what this value is here um you know we have the net value which is the uh value of the outputs minus the value of the inputs um this is the net value and then we multiply this by how efficient th the owners are contributing to the investment pool um and divide by the construction in order to get this number over here and this is the number we care about because this is how much we are um getting to the investment pool to fund construction construction is roughly speaking your gdp growth rate so this number will really matter on the right here we have publicly traded when we have publicly traded happy industrialists and we're on laissez-faire this is the conditions for getting this number here and on the left we have a uh, happy capital or we don't have any capitalist contribution because there is no publicly traded and we instead just have you know uh laissez-faire okay and so You'll notice here, just looking at the chem fertilizers or just looking at the fertilizer, this number is not that impressive, this 16.9. And then we move to publicly traded, it jumps up quite a lot. Uh, just to kind of compare it uh, to wood on sawmills, electric sawmills, or just regular sawmills, we're getting 36 with happy capitalists. And so this is why you don't want to build the agriculture, but it gets a big bump once you get onto publicly traded. Okay. Um, so this is just kind of how we're evaluating what we should be building because the goal is to have as high a proportion of buildings uh, in your economy as possible that are contributing as much as possible to the investment pool. Okay. Let's talk about grain. So roughly speaking, there's kind of have very similar uh, outputs with the exception of rice of, you know, this between 32 and 34 uh, for all of them. And so the question is, okay, which ones do we want to build? We can highlight this one here because we're going to talk about it. Um, and the answer is we are going to generally prefer, see, um, you will, there's a slight differences between the grain outputs. And you will generally want to build grain specifically in the best places to build grain and then build other stuff in the other areas. And so, for example, the weakest of these is going to be the maize, if I recall correctly. No, actually, the weakest is rye farms. Um, and you do not want to build uh, any grain where you can build rye. Instead, you would prefer to build, you know, livestock ranches or cotton plantations, anything like this. And the reason why is uh, even though it's 33.7 output, I think sugar is preferable uh, as an output good uh, to fruit and this has an output that is high in fruit low in sugar uh, on its apple orchards which will be inefficient and so we would generally prefer to avoid the rye farms similarly the millet farms other than rice look to be the best because they are outputting quite a lot of sugar they have the highest contribution to the investment pool or second highest after rice rice is a special case and so they would be preferred in millet so very often you will want to build, um, if you are building agriculture, which you don't want to do, uh, you will want to build your grain in millet places or rice places. Um, this is the general heuristic for the rice places. Um, these buildings are way, way, way better, or they're significantly better, but you do have the problem of overbuilding over the uh, subsistence rice farms. So you want to make sure you're not firing pops and killing output because it's quite a bit bigger when you do this, when you build over on the rice farms, but the rice will be the absolute best. But also most of the places where you can build rice, you can also build other better goods. This is kind of the general strategy. Uh, for livestock farms, they're not especially efficient, uh, but if you have expensive meat, you would prefer to kind of build whales to kind of offset this or provide, you know, substitute goods like decrease the price of groceries. And so generally you don't want to build livestock. Livestock, uh, there are some places where you can only build livestock. And so often I like to just build the livestock here and have it, let's just come up with an example of one. I believe Sinai is one of these states. So we'll just take a quick look at Sinai. So. 
Sinai only builds livestock ranches. And so what I like to do as a general strategy with the livestock ranches is uh, I like to build one in places that uh, can build only livestock and then set them on auto expand. And this does quite a nice thing of depressing all of the goods prices of that livestock can put out. That way it discourages my other places from building livestock. So I think this is a good strategy uh, for you to be able to do. There's a few like down here, which will be like fairly common to get that are just like livestock only uh, a few provinces here and here. Uh, but in general, General, uh, I think there's some in South America as well. If you find one of these provinces, this can be a strategy as far as the livestock goes. Let's jump back in the spreadsheet and talk plantations. So plantations are where you start getting into the point where you were kind of, um, the PMs start to look better. And the there's an important thing to note about uh, you know, the wheat farms and all this, even though these numbers are okay, what tends to happen is as you get late into the game, uh, pops stop consuming uh, wheat, which is kind of an inferior good as far as, uh, you know, SOL demands go, and the price of wheat gets really depressed. Uh, and so these buildings, even though this 33, the 35, 39, all, even though these are respectable in general, um, you would prefer to build plantation buildings because the price of grain gets very, very depressed. And so for plantation buildings, uh, you know, all of these luxury goods do not get depressed and it's similar numbers in terms of efficiency for most of them, um, where we're talking about tea, tobacco, you know, uh, opium, these sorts of things. And so um, it's generally preferable to not be building grain, to import grain, even more so because you would rather have plantations over grain-based buildings. Um, you can take a look at like all these numbers here. One important thing to note, uh, even though you know coffee and cotton have the same output efficiency, it's important to note that cotton uh, is modified by 25% throughput by cotton gins. And so this will either give you 25% more goods uh, if it's a level one building, or if it's a level 51 building, it will give you one sixth more goods, roughly 17%. And so this is just something to keep in mind that you know um, it's gonna be like, uh, it's going to look quite a lot better. Uh, so we're just going to act like it's 25% ish higher. And so it's going to start to look a lot better specifically. And then we'll come back and we'll act as if it's, what is this? One sixth higher, something like, um, uh, what is this? 300. So let's put 1900. If it's like one sixth higher, um, we, in terms of the net, because we're increasing, we're effectively by modifying this value, we're effectively increasing the throughput. This building is going to be, look a lot better in general. And this is because you have the cotton gins technology, which you don't have on any other thing. So cotton plantations is slightly preferred. Uh, but the, the big thing to notice, I guess here, uh, is opium is extraordinarily efficient. Um, it is one of the most efficient game, uh, buildings in the game in terms of you know the net output per construction it is the best building in the game it has the most net output per construction that is the value of its outputs minus its inputs and so the opium plantations um can be something you would actually want to proactively build this is a high enough value and the price of opium doesn't get depressed such that you actually you you can want to build this just for investment pool contribution but it's importantly remember you have to get on publicly traded first and you also have to have automatic irrigation otherwise it, the values really do not look um that good if that's the case if you're kind of in these three so you have to again kind of moving back and talking about technology um you have to have the 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 instance where you're getting both pump jacks or improved or pump jacks and mutual funds in the specifics of that uh and improved fertilizer if you want to go grain but as we discussed grain prices tend to get depressed it's really not um where you want to be okay um next up uh just all of this plantation stuff is good and they're all relatively similar silk is notably less efficient but we're going to talk silk is a good that you use on the you're going to need silk eventually and so you'll want to build it eventually often it's building over rice farms which is a bit of an opportunity cost you see this has an output of 26 and uh the rice has 39 but again this will eventually get depressed in price and the silk plantations will not be as depressed um I think it's worth talking about the synthetic plants and worth just kind of pointing out a couple things in the, with the synthetic plants. First of all, the base PM is not that good. Um, and this is with 29% contribution uh, from the investment pool. Um, it's only 15.7. So first of all, it's not very, it doesn't look very good on paper, but it's better than it looks. And second of all, Rayon is the only uh, PM in the synthetic plants, which actually has negative efficiency. So we're going to jump into the game and take a closer look at one of these buildings. If we have one. Otherwise, I'll load a save where we have one. Okay, we're going to load a save real quick. 
Okay, we loaded up an Italy save, which is actually probably the perfect country to be looking at uh, because we will see that, okay, we have some inputs here and what we are outputting is the dyes. And what is unique about the synthetic plants is even though they're not the most efficient building in terms of uh, outputs minus inputs per construction, um, the synthetic plants takes three times as long to build as a dye plantation. So this is important to note. Um, even though it doesn't look as good, the demand profile is extraordinarily good. The input profile of the building is really, really, really good. And you you really want to increase the, the demand for sulfur because sulfur is one of the most efficient PMs. Uh, we'll take a look at it in just a second. Uh, and often the price of fertilizer will become extremely depressed. So since this building demands both of these, these buildings can be very profitable and they can help to prop up your other industries, namely sulfur mines and the boom boom factories. That is the chemical plant. And so because of that, synthetic plants is an okay option for producing dyes. It should generally be preferred to not use it to produce um, silk, silk and dye have the same uh, price in terms of uh, the base price. And so uh, what will happen is it takes extra wood and it outputs the si a good with the same price. So it is net inefficient and will almost always not be profitable unless the price of silk is really depressed. And so generally, I think that these are fine. While well, these are a fine source of dyes, um, they're not extraordinarily efficient. You can notably get a much bigger throughput bonus on these than you can in uh than you can for plantations but that's kind of a separate thing but these will be it will be preferred to source your silk through plantations if you can and import roots well both through import roots and your dyes you can source through this um just kind of something to note and talk about because it is highly relevant um uh and we will come in and look at the spreadsheets uh in just for a moment here um, and we will take a look at the resource industries the absolute most efficient is the sulfur mines uh, and it's efficient even when you're like not on better PMs it's extraordinarily efficient and so by creating more demand for sulfur this is really good also um, the uh, what is it uh, we're looking for industrial goods here. Um, the chemical plants are also relatively efficient, but they often become kind of less efficient off the back of the fact that fertilizer becomes really depressed. And so this will increase the profitability of your chemical industries. And so this is good as well. And so that's kind of, you know, the, the little bit of strategy and talk for synthetic plants. Okay, now we're gonna talk about the two strategies I think might be okay, uh, but I don't think are okay, but I think they're just worth talking about. Um, the first is, uh, Throughput is really important, and it's often very hard to get throughput on agriculture. Uh, so if we take a look here, and we scroll down, and we look at the agriculture, we see we have nine of these, eight of these, eight of these, and five of these. And it would be preferable to have all of one thing, because economies of scale is just basically free, uh, free goods. Uh, what it does is it increases the inputs, and it increases the outputs, and it makes the building a lot more profitable. And so it would have been greatly preferred, you know, if this building was all one thing, not just a smattering of different things. And so what I think a potential strategy might be is as you reach an inflection point where these goods start to become kind of good, um, if you don't have a lot of these things building already, what you can do is you can build one and then set it to auto expand and then you will suffer some inefficiency early, but later on you will get to have a much larger throughput from economies of scale um, kind of as the game goes on. Uh, I also think, you know, it's better to have economic growth earlier in the game than later in the game. And this is kind of why I think the strategy is not good, but it's like, it's just on the cusp and it might be good. You know, it would be greatly preferred to have maximum throughput bonuses on all of these buildings, which you could get if you set on auto expand just a single industry. So for here, we might have put cotton plantations on auto expand. And then we could have come here and, you know, set the wheat on auto expand. And that way this would have been predominantly wheat. And and then this other one would have been predominantly cotton. We get better throughput bonuses. And if you are not building any of these arable goods yourselves, it is much harder to chase the throughput bonuses. And so having this auto expansion is a decent strategy for trying to approach that um, in a way that I think is relatively constructive. So that's strategy one. The second strategy is, as we discussed earlier, uh, we get migration attraction off the basis of having unbuilt uh, arable land. Here we're probably not getting any because I think we've expanded it all. But if we were to take a look at maybe Tejas does not fully have their automatic, they don't have this. Yeah, they have a ton of unused arable land. So if we take a look at population and we look at migration attraction, we'll see they have a, uh, a ton from unused arable land, 25. 
in general, you prefer to have manufacturing in your incorporated states, and you prefer to have resource industries with no manufacturing in your unincorporated states. The strategy is this. You can, in theory, put automatic expansion and build out a ton of the arable land in your unincorporated states in order to discourage migration there, which will let ha make it have less free labor, which will further discourage them from building as many industries there. Um, that way you don't have to incorporate it, because if we were going to try and incorporate Kasai here, uh, it's going to take, you know, 21 years in order to incorporate it. And so... For places where you have a 21 year incorporation, it could be the case that you want to expand the agriculture quickly to decrease the migration, to make the industries less profitable and try and fully employ those pops so that you don't have to um, incorporate it. And this is just kind of a strategy that I think is might be good, but this one I don't think is as close as the specializing one, which I think is actually probably pretty good because man oh man, this is a big waste of, a, uh, of throughput, you know? You'd really prefer to have uh, one business at level 51 and not just this smattering of a bunch of different ones because it's just like it's just free goods effectively because the cost of transportation and of uh, engines is not particularly high you know the the input values for plantations are so close to zero it's just like a lot of anyways we we, we don't need to continue on that so in summary, what the strategy is regarding agriculture is you don't build it um, and you, for the most part, focus on importing it uh, in the early game. Uh, you don't build any of it uh, and there is a bit of an inflection point. Uh, and that inflection point is specifically when you unlock pump jacks for the plantations and improved fertilizer for the grain alongside also having mutual funds then it becomes efficient to build or close enough to being efficient that it's going to be good to build in order to maximize investment pool transfer um there's kind of two other considerations you need to do in order to think about agriculture and that is first of all it will decrease migration attraction whenever you build over it because you are losing the unbuilt arable lands and then second of all um if you are fully employed in your subsistence farms if you if, if you really don't want to build over them because it will fire pops you'll create unemployment and you will lose out on these goods that are being produced um as far as the farms go, you generally want to prefer millet and rice uh, in terms of building grain and let your other stuff be built in areas uh, where you have the option to build wheat and maize and this sort of stuff. And so if we go into like the USA and like something like this, we can scroll down, we see that we can produce maize here. So we'd want to produce no maize here and have cotton and livestock and tobacco plantations, preferably up to level 51 to get that max economies of scale throughput bonus. And then we would want to build our grain oriented stuff elsewhere uh, as a strategy if you are going to build agriculture and also generally speaking grain will become extremely depressed in price as the game goes on and will not be that, that expensive and so these businesses will not be as profitable as they look in the spreadsheet they kind of all look the same in the spreadsheet but grain is generally not preferred uh, because uh, the other goods will scale better in the late game you notice here is there a single good above this that is produced in a plantation other than cotton which of course is uh, partially depressed because the cotton gin throughput bonus no so uh, you'll notice uh, a lot of these goods actually can be relatively expensive you'll have tea here coffee etc mostly etc okay uh for the plantations they can be quite efficient notably opium is actually efficient for contributing to the investment pool once you get on publicly traded and plantations so feel free to build up as much opium as you want um once you have this point um and then we talked about two strategies which i think might be good uh the first is kind of when you hit an inflection point where you are getting pump jacks maybe having each place specialize in order to chase large throughput bonus i think this might be good um, I'm pretty on the fence about it because I think that, you know, continuing to focus on capitalist owned stuff is going to be good, but this might be good. And the second is uh, intentionally overbuilding agriculture in unincorporated states that you don't want to wait 20 years to incorporate. Uh, that way it will not have, it, they will, won't build up a bunch of industry because uh, you will discourage migration there. The labor won't be as cheap. Also, there will be a bunch of jobs. And so this can be a way to kind of keep your industries more in your incorporated states. I'm not as sure on this strategy but i think it might be there anyways hope you enjoyed feel free to like comment subscribe it does help out and have a good one